and so today the prayer is going to be offered you already heard testimonies of people who have we must understand one thing devil is real demons are real they hurt people they torment people many times they operate through generational curses means in the family everyone is getting a divorce everyone in the family is sick or everyone in the family is dying at a certain age or everyone in the family has certain types of accidents or everyone in the family has miscarriage or everyone in the family has mental problems or problems with depression these things are not just coincidences these are not chances these things have a person behind it and that person is a demon and as long as you go into a therapy only taking medicine but you're not dealing with the spiritual problem you will not fix it and they will keep reappearing in other people's lives and in your children's lives that's why these prayer lines exist i know that maybe today you're visiting for the first time and you're like i heard word demon more in one hour than i've heard in my 10 years welcome to christianity HD Christianity not black and white HD Christianity full color Christianity one third of Jesus' ministry is casting out demons amen and I ask you for deep apology for all the churches you went to and never heard about the devil because he is our enemy we're not ashamed of the Holy Spirit and we're not afraid of the devil amen we're not afraid of his work and we are here and he hates our church because in our church his activities get exposed in our church you come out you hear the testimony and you're like oh my goodness what she's going through I've been going through maybe I have a demon and then next prayer line you're coming you're like I might sign up to get checked <laughs> or sometimes people come and they sign up their husband they're like it's not me for sure but my husband he has one <laughs> and then you bring your husband for a prayer line He's praying, he's being prayed for, nothing happens to him and they're praying for you and you're screaming, you're a crocodile. You're like, hmm, that's interesting. I thought he was the crocodile. And that's exactly, it happened. We've seen it happen so many times. One gentleman from California came three years ago to the Wiseman Harry Revival and he was convinced this all demon thing was a joke. He, he thought we paid people. So he actually came and told us, he said, I wonder how much do you guys pay those actors? I'm like, how much will we, can we pay you? to act that he's like nothing I will never do that I'm like you're an idiot you really think this is an act he said well it seems like an act because you could see that it's not like they're not completely out of control so he sat through the service and the wise man is praying and there this guy ah! 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 screaming and yelling they brought him to the front he's screaming he's a snake screaming he's anger and then after we uh, he got delivered from demons I came up to him and I was like who paid you <laughs> and he was rushing he said Vlad it's a it's the power of God he says it's the power of God I was like we told you it's the power of God <laughs> but today we also must understand that deliverance begins the process it doesn't change everything there is things you have you have to do a role you have to play in seeing your life completely change being the having the privilege of seeing the prayer lines every month dealing with people regularly and in our own lives experiencing freedom we've come to the conclusion that deliverance fixes everything and at the same time can fix nothing deliverance is an event freedom is a journey deliverance gets the demons out freedom keeps them out and you may say it's the same thing freedom is not the same thing because freedom is renewing your mind changing your habits and changing your lifestyle changing your speech changing your thought pattern aligning certain things in your life and today for a brief moment I want to speak about this topic of freedom I want to speak about the process of possessing if you have your Bible let's go together with me to Exodus chapter 23 and verse 29 Exodus chapter 23 and verse 29 and I will send hornets before you 
actually verse 29 not 28 I will not drive them out before you in one year so this is God telling Israelites he's not going to get all of their enemies out in one year I will not drive them out before you in one year lest the land become desolate and the beasts of the field become too numerous for you little by little I will drive them out from before you until you have increased and you inherit the land God wants you to increase into your full inheritance and calling of God when you are born into this world you are not born an adult you are born as an infant and slowly as you grow in that you get more responsibilities and more privileges and so is with spiritual life God says I won't get all of the enemies out at once I will get enough to let you settle in and let you grow and as you grow you will possess more and more of what God has for you can somebody say amen my encouragement before the prayer line today is this God wants you to grow through life not just go through life the Bible clearly states to us when Jesus was telling us if you come to me I will give you rest two verses later he says if you abide in me take my yoke upon yourself you will find that rest there are things you get from coming to Jesus but there are things you will only get by growing staying and serving Jesus and many people miss that second component they come to the Lord and they receive certain blessings they receive certain healing they receive a certain peace they receive even a small financial breakthrough and after that they think if I just keep coming to the prayer line that is when I see, receive more when sometimes it's not by coming again to Jesus that you receive more it's by growing in Jesus that Jesus says now I won't give you peace you will get your own peace you will find that peace amen we see that from nature when I was in Florida I had the chance to see palm trees and palm trees are one of the amazing uh, trees in the world and palm trees have a lot of characteristics to a Christian life. One of the characteristics a pastor from Florida told me about palm trees is he says if you put a rope around the palm tree or a chain around the palm tree when the palm tree is young to keep the palm tree growing straight he said what's going to happen is other trees allow the rope to grow inside of the tree when the tree gets bigger sometimes you will you will even uh, see that when a rope is within a tree and it made a dent and the rope is still there has never been broken a palm tree is a very unique tree in the sense that when you put a rope around a palm tree when it's young when it grows it will never let the rope or the chain no matter how strong the chain is to grow inside of it it will break it it won't break it when it's young but it will be it will break it when it's grown sometimes in our infancy when we just begin our walk with God Satan puts certain things in our life certain chains and they do not always get broken by the anointing at times they get broken by your growth not everything gets solved by even counseling but many things get solved by serving Christ when people begin to instead of focusing on solving and fixing their life they begin to focus on serving and begin to focus on glorifying the name of God can somebody say amen God wants you to grow God wants your life to mature now this morning I want to mention five steps of growth now these will not be typical steps you've heard in church before well read the Bible pray don't cuss tithe and don't sleep with your girlfriend I'm going to mention something that involves you personally. First few steps you already on them or you pass through them and the rest of them will just briefly touch on how we can grow. Step number one is five steps of our personal growth. The first step you all begin as a male if you're a guy and a female if you're a girl. It's identified by your gender this stage is the stage you received on the moment you got into this earth now we live in a world today where a lot of people actually no longer know whether they are male or female and we're told in schools you are what you want to be listen honey you are what you want to be in the area of your gender you are not what you want to be even if you can afford a surgery you still 
not what you want to be you are what God said for you to be and how do you know what he said for you to be go in the restroom and check amen, amen. in the age of confusion it's very simple if you're a male maybe you are feeling like a female it's perhaps due to the fact your mother loved you too much or you didn't have sisters or maybe some other things or you like pink collar and clip your eyebrows and and do little things on your toes and other things you know God forgive you for all of your iniquities and your weaknesses but you're still a male or maybe you're a female and you act more like a man because you've never had a father and you, you had to take on the responsibilities and maybe you're like man what, what was I why it's a man trapped in a female body no 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 you're not a man trapped in a female body you're a female happen to face certain challenges in life which may do take on men's responsibilities you have to be very clear about who you are in the area of gender I know this may sound very absurd what I'm saying to some of you we're facing a crisis in our school where girls go into guys bathrooms guys go into girls bathrooms now it's becoming common in other states now they're creating and making it into a law where you have to have another gender for people who don't know who they are we become so sophisticated and so educated that we cannot look at somebody's biology and determine their gender and that has to change with us the first stage is you're a male for a young lady you are a female stage number two is you become a boy and for those who are females they become girls this stage usually lasts a few years for some people it lasts a few decades boyhood or girlhood is defined by the toys you like to play with it's completely normal when a 10 year old or a five year old plays with toys but then you see that person becomes 25 the only difference change is toys became bigger and they're still with toys you see same thing with girls is then they, they didn't mature up but they become toys nothing is worse than when a boy becomes a husband when a boy becomes a father and you see him playing video games with kids and you're not sure who's enjoying those video games more the father or the child you're seeing her walk with the child and you're not sure who is younger the, the daughter or the mother because of their behavior boyhood is the stage girlhood is the stage every single person needs to pass but we must understand this is the stage most people will spend their whole life insecure immature led by their feelings defined by their toys only obsessed with the things that matter for those who are 13 and 12 years old instead of maturing to the stage that God wants us to be stage number three is when you become a man and when a female becomes a woman you're male by birth you're a man by choice you're a female by birth you're a woman by choice you're not a man because you have a truck and you're not a man because you got a bulldog you're not a man because you have a job you're a man what defines manhood is maturity what defines maturity is ability to take responsibility man is not just someone who can read the bible because nothing is worse than seeing people who read the bible or who claim spiritual connection to christ but you see in their life lack this component of maturity and because there is no maturity in their life their life and their inheritance crumbles and they get delivered and i've seen i've had people in my house stay and live with me who got delivered, who got prophesied by prophet T.B. Joshua, who had things happen to them and then I had to walk into the house and take a pipe from their hands because they almost set my duplex on fire because they were smoking drugs and they had the passion and they had the zeal but their life is still on the level of an 11 year old boy because they never matured and they've never developed that within them to be a man God wants if you're a guy today God wants you to be a man a person that is responsible the person that has a maturity one of the marks of a man is that he is able to control his feelings instead of being ruled by his feelings one of the marks of a boy is the boy is like a wave tossed by the winds he is tossed by people's opinions one of the marks by a, of a girl is the fact that her feelings rule her life 
she's not ruling her feelings Jesus came to one man and one man was laying on a stretcher and this stretcher was his life this stretcher carried him everywhere this stretcher was his comfort zone this stretcher was carrying him everywhere and Jesus came and he touched that man and he said I want you to pick up this stretcher and carry it Jesus Christ did not came to make boys into boys in big bodies he came to touch a person's life and to make you into a man who picks up the very things used to pick you up and carry that pick up responsibilities pick up certain things in your life and carry them we have men today who get touched by Jesus and they walk around and they drop everything in their hands anything they take get dropped and they cannot maintain their blessing they cannot maintain their freedom and they cannot maintain their marriage their finances their health and their emotions every area because their idea of freedom is Jesus will touch me and remove and take all responsibility for himself that is not scriptural freedom is not Jesus removing your mat it's giving you the power to carry your mat it's not Jesus going and fixing 20 years of problems you caused and removing that it's giving you the power to be free from those demons and fastly and quickly come out of those problems fix those problems and put your life back in order for the glory of God deliverance gets you out of your mat but Jesus wants to develop maturity in us which helps us to pick up our mat can somebody say amen you become a man or you become a woman it's very important we challenge young people sometimes young people come to us and they said you know am I ready to get married and after I ask them how old they are the second question is usually they always already know but I don't think I have enough money money is not a determining factor for marriage there are a lot of couples who get married without money and there's couples who get married with money what will determine the success of your future is not money it is your maturity because you if you're mature you can go through hell with your wife living on cheese and crackers and fall in love more with one another appreciate life appreciate God and you can be immature and float in money and kill one another what determines success of your life is not your even education. Maturity is not, it's not four things. Maturity is not age. It takes time to become mature, but time does not make you mature. Maturity, secondly, it's not appearance. Yes, mature people look mature, but not all people who look mature are mature. Because a guy, you can be 21, grow facial hair and you walk around like you're a macho man. But it takes one small compliment and you're gonna cry, cry and weep, drop the ball, walk away from the church, leave the relationship and your license tabs are not changed, your credit card payments are not paid off, your emotional roller coaster. But you look mature because you grow facial hair. It's not appearance, it's not achievement. It's possible to achieve certain things in the gym by developing big muscles it's possible to even fix cars build houses it's possible to learn certain techniques with voices and to communicate really well and certain achievements yes mature people they achieve things but not all achievers are mature and it's not academics you can go to college and get a degree you can have a bachelor's degree and be immature you can have a master's degree and not have no sense of what it's like to master your own feelings. You can have a PhD and when it comes to life, when it comes to emotions, when it comes to going through the hard things and maintaining positive attitude to be on the same level as a person who goes to kindergarten. Because maturity, it is our ability to take responsibility in life. Please understand God is far more interested in just getting demons out of our life and just providing us healing. Your life is going to blossom not only when you remove these things, it's when you focus and you choose to live a life that is mature. And sometimes certain situations come into our life to provoke that maturity. We start with a male, we become a boy, become a man and after we become a man we become a husband. A husband 
is when you are defined by your wife for a lady she becomes a wife now unfortunately today this stage is blurred because people go straight from a boy from a boy and they don't become husbands why they don't become husbands because it takes a man to become a husband anybody can be a boyfriend but it takes a man to become a husband we live in a dilemma today in our generation where because we are not taught properly we quickly boys become boyfriends people live together and they don't mature to another stage of marriage yesterday I had the opportunity to marry uh, Alex and Edith who Edith gotten saved in our church about a few months ago got baptized and uh, they live together and it's a common thing in our generation today when people come to church they come to prayer lines and then you begin to talk to them you find out that they live together they're asking God for a blessing but they live together and they're not married and so in our church we don't judge people we don't condemn people but we also want to help people to mature to this stage and so I would meet with this her uh, her uh, at the time her boyfriend or fiance and I would ask him and I said well, what's holding you guys back from getting married and he said I don't know and we would talk to her and she said you know what after she gets baptized she says I know now that this is what I need to take there's certain maturity develops in your life when you not just take the girl out on a date but you bring the girl out to the altar a lot of guys have the have the playfulness to tell you I love you and everything but they don't have the maturity to be committed because once it comes to commitment their feet gets cold and they're not sure whether they want to spend a life with you you're like am I dating a 12 year old or am I dating a 25 year old and that's where you really know whether he is mature or not you must understand as a man as a young man if you are in a relationship part of your maturity is having the audacity and the guts to say you know what I'm gonna marry you and we're gonna live forever okay the forever part is an exaggeration but we will live as long I, I'm, I'm using that word now because my wife always asks me make sure I tell her that I love her forever I always used to say I love her till death she said no Till forever so we're gonna have to borrow a Mormon theory Mormon doctrine on this aspect but the issue is that you have to be a man to be to be that for those of us who are married here you must understand one thing if you're a man your success as a man is determined by the happiness of your wife every wife your success as a wife is determined by the happiness of your husband remember that put that on the refrigerator put that in front of you if your wife is not happy and you're praying three hours a day stop praying and go and obey God why is there a reason to pray to a God who says love your wife as Christ loved the church when you don't do what God says and you prayer sometimes can be an excuse for disobedience where we go ask God to do that which we should do to another person I know that personally because sometimes I would come to church to pray and I know I have a beef with my wife or I have something very challenging and I'm praying and I'm like God you know it's her fault let's move on why is she even and I feel this it, between me and God is she's standing right there and I'm like it's one thing that she ruined my morning it's another thing she's ruining my prayer and I rebuke the devil and I rebuke her and I just I say I remove it in the name of Jesus and I move on and I was like God let's put her on the back seat we'll deal with her later let's just me and you have a fellowship and literally it seems like God would keep it out there until I would repent until I would say God after we're done I'm gonna go back home and I'm gonna talk to her I'm gonna give her a hug I'm gonna say I'm sorry and all of this stuff and only then God's presence begins to come I understand and I know some of you maybe you're saying this is not spiritual this is life if you disconnect life from spirituality it's when you start getting into weird things if you are praying 24 7 but you're not loving your husband but you are not taking care of your spouse you're not valuing them and they're walking on eggshells in front of you listen your success is determined by how happy they are not how the rich they are not what kind of clothes you buy them not what kind of gifts they get not what kind of house they live in not the kind of car you gave them it's the kind of happiness you have made by your actions every marriage has three main components first one is commitment it's when you make a decision to be committed for the rest of your life 
If you make your marriage permanent, all of your problems will be temporary. The second component of every marriage is communication. It's when you learn to communicate with the person that you are married to. Communication comes so naturally when you're dating and it comes as a miracle when you're married. Because guys quickly forget their vocabulary, how to describe things. We, we just throw in the headlines and we don't want to share the deepest hearts and God wants us to learn to communicate. And there's a lot about communication that I'm not going to go into. And thirdly is confrontation. Every marriage has to have confrontation. Conflict means disagreement. We call it a fight. People who believe that or people who say in our marriage we don't fight. It's either one person is a slave and the other person is a Hitler or both of you have reached such a height that you are completely completely in the other world or both of you you're completely oblivious to the fact you're only fighting. It's not possible to have a good marriage without disagreement. Disagreement is needed. Disagreement is a sign both of you are alive. Both of you are different. Both of you have brain cells and you're thinking different. God created you uniquely. The only problem in the conflict in the marriage and this is where maturity and spiritual growth is revealed is when people in marriage see fight as a sign that our marriage is bad. And the second problem is when in the marriage in our fighting it's a street fight. You know how you fight in the streets? The goal is that no rules. There is no referee there. You punch him, whatever, it will hurt the most. You use the rock if it's close to you, a bucket if it's in your hands, a stick if it's in your disposal, a knife, a wallet, a key with your hands in their eyes, whatever you can to cause the most harm in the fastest way and run. That is called a street fight. Apply that to marriage and you will either be dead or divorced. And many people that's exactly how they fight. They threaten with divorce. The moment they cannot get a point across, well guess what happens? I will leave you. You won't find no one else. They use words like never and always. When they begin to conflict, they begin to get physical, shut the doors, scream and yell, punch through the walls. A man begins to disconnect and just goes and begins to watch pornography or begins to watch other movies and says, shut up, just leave me alone. I'm busy or I'm tired and that kind of a fighting, what it does is it destroys your character and it destroys your marriage and it creates a generational curse because your kids are like sponges. They watch how dad is treating mommy and guess what you're realizing? This is not spiritual, this is creating a curse that is leading up to them. And subconsciously they're like wet cement. It's imprinted on them. This is how you talk to a woman. This is how you talk to a man. And when they get married you tell them, no honey don't do that. Well the problem is that you already placed a print on their back on how to do that. It's the most spiritual thing when a man loves his woman. It's the most spiritual thing when a woman honors her man. It's the most spiritual thing when in the family it's a place of paradise. Even if you don't pray two hours a day but there is a communion and there is a handling of a conflict in a proper way. This is where maturity and spirituality is. Not just when you lift your hands and say thank you Jesus and then lift your hands and curse your spouse. Amen. A husband and a wife level and the last one is when you're a father. Or a mother. After you become a husband and a wife, then you become a father or a mother. Unfortunately, we live in day to day where a lot of people, they become fathers before they become wives or uh, husbands. They become fathers before they become men. They become mothers before they develop in maturity. And it becomes a very painful process, becomes very difficult. We have a lot of single moms in the church and a lot of them have went through very painful times and we, we congratulate them, we love them, we respect them for the journey they've endured. But they're also sending each young person a lesson. Don't become a father until you first become a man. Don't become a father until you first become a husband. In this way your life becomes easier. As a father you must understand this is where you mature more and more. When you have children, your life goes to a level of selflessness that you never knew it's even possible. Your life goes to the level of sacrifice that you never knew is possible. If you are parents, I want you to write down a few of these points when it comes to raising your children. 
you may say what are you telling us about raising our children you don't have children your own I have home groups and I have home group leaders and most of them are your children and a lot of you come to me when you cannot talk to them so take notes <laughs> um, go ahead place number one we have to love them if we give kids more hugs they won't need drugs I'm gonna tell you one thing if you give kids more love you will satisfy a vacuum for what society offers to them a lot of kids what they're really looking for is love not a lecture not to be their teacher but to be a person first of all who loves them the bible says do not provoke your kids a lot of kids ha parents hammer at kids obey me the bible says submit to me well the same bible says not to provoke them to anger but we don't see that we see that like well that's not important the fact that i always provoke them to anger that doesn't matter but they need to obey me well you're older do not provoke them to anger number two is lift your kids lifting means encourage them praising your kids is good it builds their ego but when you lift them it builds their self-esteem when you encourage them you're not just talking about you did something great no it's great you did something it encourages them it encourages their self-esteem and it strengthens them number three we limit them one of the worst things you can do to a kid is make him into a king in your house be afraid of him and because he throws a fit you throw all the rules out because he's upset it's okay limit him there has to be limitations you don't need to beat kids this day turn off the wi-fi let me give you a new version for do not spare the rod remove the phone charger and watch as their phone is dying and they are dying watch as the phone gets to one percent and they begin to panic that will create more pain than any belt wire or whatever people use now to discipline their kids with you know spanking just remove those things that are technology put consequences that will hurt them more than even physical spanking <laughs> amen oh children i feel sorry for some of you right now <laughs> the next one lead them kids need you to understand you have to understand one thing about children is they're going to do not what you say what you do I learned about marriage not because my dad and mom ever talked to me about marriage I've never heard my mom and dad talk to, to us about marriage I know more about marriage because I watched them the way they treat one another never seen my dad raise my voice against my mom unfortunately I cannot say that about my mom <laughs> that's a half joke but I've never seen them fight in a way that will cause my mom or dad leave never seen them raise their hand against one another I've never seen them you know skip church on Sunday because they had a picnic there was no such a thing I have saw that that was demonstrated how you treasure people how you treasure family how you treasure God's kingdom and that's imprinted though I've never had a lesson a lot of parents talk to their kids a lot remember they're gonna learn more from how you do it than what you tell them can somebody say amen and the last one is laugh with them I believe that the holy home is a happy home holiness is not defined if you can make your kids cry and holiness is not defined by just making your kids watching tb joshua videos that's a com completely awesome but if your home is depression if your home has no happiness if you don't have a smile and your kids are walking like a little prisoners of war in your castle and you're the king that is not a happy home and that is not a holy home God wants you to raise to be a father your kids determine the success of what it is to be a father and what it is to be your mother can somebody say amen with that said I want us to rise to our feet right now